seniors, what's up? Big congrats to you. Um, you made it. Unusual ending. No one saw that coming. Big twist. But you graduated. You're officially smart. Maybe you had a kind of a ceremony with your cap and in your gown and in your. Uh, we're celebrating you the best way we can. Uh, by the way, tidbit. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the gown comes from friars and monks who used to run universities where most of the students were friars and monks. And that funny little square hat comes from what priests wore back then. And you can kind of see it. Certain um, like uh, monsignors might have like a kind of a, a funny hat like that. And so when you wear your, your cap and your gown, you're actually wearing religious symbolism public school, private school, whatever. And when you wear that hat, you're actually part of a parade of the priesthood of Jesus by which your baptism, you're baptized into that priesthood, uh, prophet, and king of Jesus. So kind of cool thing to know that, that you're part of this big tradition of our, in our faith. Um, yeah, good tidbit there. But I really want to say just welcome and congrats to you. I wish I could show up to your graduations, you know, looking all like a friar and, and celebrate you. And um, we wish we could do that. But this is our kind of a, a gift to you, a chance to reflect a little bit on your experience the past four years and particularly the past uh, couple months here as we finish up. Um, but just want to welcome you to our, our senior virtual retreat, um, which I view as a silver lining. And this is like typical God. What the Lord loves to do is to take situations that have chaos, that have difficulties, and insert himself right into them. Uh, the Lord draws near to us, especially in, in tough circumstances. And so this, this retreat is designed to help you see where the Lord has been in your life, and how you can continue to deepen that relationship wherever your next uh, step is um, as you make this, this transition. Um, and so I, to give you a bit of an example of a way to look at that, I'll tell you a little bit about some of my life. And actually in my room right now, we are we're kind of packing up. Um, because as you know, CYFM and, and me and Father Fred are moving to Graymore in September. And packing up is always interesting. You know, you look at some of the objects that you've had in your room, in your possession, and some of them you will definitely take for your next step in your journey. Things that are of deep sentimental value, um, images of, of your family, your friends, your faith. Other things you'll take because they're practical, um, books, soap, you know, things you use, and there'll be things that you do not take with you. Maybe things that were practical for a time, maybe things that you found you sin or were helpful, but no longer are, and you donate them and, and, you, and you move on, and that's part of the process of life. So what we're gonna do in, in these reflections is try to find a way that we can pack our faith and then unpack it to use it to deepen it as we go to college. Because there's things, you know, just like, for instance, um, will I take like this dust buster to Graymore? Probably not, I never use it. Me and dust are kind of cool. Um, it doesn't bother me, I don't bother it. You know, and this vest, like this vest is like perfect for hunting big game. But do I really need that many pockets? I got tons of pockets as it is. Um, so maybe I'll let these things go. What else? Oh yeah, this. This is like kind of those things you put in your room and, and do push-ups or chin-ups. Um, never really used it. I'm kind of afraid it's going to fall off the door frame. If anyone needs this, let me know. I got one for you. But there are things like that in our lives. And I really want to reflect on the importance of faith in my life. And I want you also to think about this because later on, we're going to have a bit of a time to reflect together and share on where the Lord has been in our lives. Because especially in these moments, the Lord is, is kind of sometimes hiding. And it takes a bit of introspection to see that. So I had the great gift of going to St. Mary's School in Hagerstown, Maryland. 
where I learned the most important lessons of my life, primarily how to pray. And I learned scripture, you know, I learned about the parables, um, I learned about, you know, the Lord's love for me and the sacraments. It was an excellent experience, and sort of at the center of it was a woman named Mrs. Bender, who was our librarian slash gym teacher, which tells you a lot about Catholic school budgets. And she also ran a prayer group, and, I, and she actually, we're still in touch, she sent me a photo of our ro after-school rosary group. There, there we are. That's me right there. Apparently I was skiing uh, that time. Um, must have been taken in the winter. And uh, yeah, there's Drew McWilliams, and there's Chris Joliet. Um, there's uh, Kelly Wills. And the other uh, Rosary Crusaders there, here's me, uh, proclaiming the word at a young age. <laughs> um, and that was, for me, the most valuable thing because, yeah, it was a good school. We actually did, it was well known for its English classes. Um, I knew an indirect object in, like, fourth grade. The school was excellent. Sister Corda, shout out, English teacher, excellent. Um, I learned all those things, photosynthesis, chlorophyll, how to diagram sentences, you know, uh, math, all these things that people learn. But more importantly, I learned my faith and, and the importance of it and the fact that the Lord loved me and, and dwelled within me. And an object that I've taken with me in my journey is this rosary. Now, I was part of the rosary club, and I had kind of an entry-level rosary. Um, I had, like, the plastic one that glowed in the dark, which was fine. I was, like, beginner JV rosary prayer. But Mrs. Bender had this nice box of, uh, of beaded rosaries and, oh, the envy that would fill my soul when I saw these nice, uh, you know, beads and, and real sturdy, good quality rosaries. You could do some praying with these things. And, and how I longed for these rosaries. And when I finished eighth grade, she gave me this nice one. Look at the quality. Look at that quality there. Beautiful. Um, so I still have this. And I still pray with this. And uh, it's you know, it's a symbol of my faith that I still use, and it also has sentimental value. Um, so, as you may have noticed, uh, I, in, in middle school, I wasn't like fat. I was jolly. Um, and so I decided I wanted to de-jollify a little bit going to high school. And to do that, very basic, I ran one mile just about every day in the summer between eighth grade and ninth grade. And I was very surprised. Running is like it's kind of like our faith. Anything you do with consistency, you improve at. It's, it's inevitable. Um, it's almost impossible to not get better. I mean, injuries aside, but it's if you keep doing something, you will improve. And so I kept doing this, and I was kind of surprised. Started out, you know, seven minutes or so. By the end of the summer, running, you know, 530 mile. Not bad for a ninth grader. Um, got involved in indoor track. I ran under five my, uh, my, my freshman year. Um, by my sophomore year, I was the fastest sophomore in the state of Maryland. Not a big deal. Maryland's kind of a small state, but I was. Um, and so running became like a really important thing to me. So just to kind of give you a little map. Um, my childhood was very good. I, I was blessed. Uh, good parents, good role models. You know, this Catholic school was excellent that I went to. And so started out uh, a bit of a high note here. Uh, things were good. You know, I had the normal, like, angsty kind of uh, arguments with my parents, my little sister. But overall, very, very good um, childhood. Now, high school, with the success of, of running, I'll show you my little running symbol here. Um, this meant a lot to me, you know, all... The, the athletics and, and things like that. And my confidence really began to kind of grow uh, in that time. And so there I am taking off, feeling good. And um, my sophomore year, like I said, I was, was doing very well on the team for cross country. And my coach took me aside before the state race and said, Eric, you're ranked about 20th, top 15, make all state. So if you have a good day, you might walk out of here being all state. And I was like, that sounds really good. So get there and uh, guess what place I got? 
You're right. Sixteenth by like not even like like uh, like boom boom all state loser like a, a, a milliseconds. Um, and so that you know I had so much into like running that for me set me back emotionally. So kind of a, a low point um, there. But luckily, I had a lot of good friends and teammates, and they kind of said, Eric, A, it's okay, you did well, um, but we got track season, and you got to start getting ready for that. The team's counting on you for that, too. And so, got involved in, in indoor track, and the real, so I'm not sure what would have happened had I not had encouragement from some of my friends. But, uh, so, kind of a, a down, followed by and up there. Um, towards the end of my, uh, my high school time, I really was interested in, in military service and I uh, went to West Point, my little West Point letter there. And um, so yeah, you can tell, big difference here in uh, you know, a lot of achievements here. I went from like kind of a big fish, what's the word, no, small fish, big pond. I went from being, let's, what is the phrase? I went from being a big fish in a small pond to like whatever, like the minnow, like minnow-esque, you know, at, at the West, at West Point. Um, but still, it was good for me and especially for my faith because when I got there, they issued me, Eric Lenhart, a cadet Bible. This, it's, it's beautiful. It fits, in your, it fits in my pocket. It's like, it's awesome. I still carry it. It's one of those things I carry with me. Um, I read the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles my first semester. Changed my life. Um, if nothing else, please, please, please take with you your Bible. I know those who have been on our DDA retreat, we gave you one. It's like the number one bestseller like a thousand years in a row. Um, take it with you. Just start to read the Gospel. Start now. Reading the Gospel of Matthew. I know... You've, you've heard most of the stories before as, as a young person, a child. Um, read them again. As, as a young adult, they'll come to mean something different. Um, as you experience suffering and loss and challenges, they'll come to mean something different. Scripture has an inexhaustible uh, significance and meaning. Just this morning, Father Fred and I were talking about uh, the Acts of the Apostles reading from Mass this morning and how we had never you know, heard this, this phrase about Paul making an argument about himself being a, a Pharisee. Um, I, I probably read it you know, many years ago, but it hit me in a new way. Please, please, please start to read uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Um, chances are it'll hook you right in. You'll see yourself in a new way. So one of those objects I take with me always. Also at West Point, I started to get in, into daily mass and my prayer life started to open up. Prior to, uh, in high school, my prayer was mostly um, self-centered, which I don't say was terrible. It's, it is what it was. It was, my prayer was, Lord, help me do good on this test. Help me get into West Point. By the way, I have no idea how I got in. I suspect a uh, gross clerical error because um, I'm like, I'm like Mario from Mario Kart, like pretty average. I know like I said I was a good runner, but like, again, Maryland, tiny kind of state. Um, I, I don't know how I got in. I like wasn't, <laughs> I was very average, like Mario, like not bad, but like average, you know, B plus. Um, and so I get there, and one th and I'm reading the script gospels, um, and I discover that they have mass every day. And I bet when you get to wherever you're going next, your school, um, you can find either your parish or campus ministry has a daily mass. Do a Google search now and see where you can go to mass every day. Um, for me, big gift. It was very easy for me because you had the option of going to formation and getting yelled at for having like unshiny shoes or whatever, or you know how like military works, or going to mass and afterwards hanging with the chaplain and eating Pop-Tarts. It was like a no brainer. I was bringing all my friends, Jewish, Protestant. Um, it was beautiful. There was like no reason not to go. And I think all those things, even though my motivation was a little skewed, it did 
it, it did something to my soul. It, it gave me a, a new kind of way to view the world, and my prayer started to be more universal. I was praying more for friends and family. Um, I was going to retreats for the first time. I'd never gone to retreat until I went to college, and that was opening me up so much. And around that time, I, uh, I was a sophomore at the time at the academy. They call them a yuck or a yearling. We did a, um, a summer in the field, so doing a lot of soldier exercises. And they have these things called MREs, meals ready to eat. And uh, they're pretty much um, garbage. I don't know. I didn't like them that much with one exception. This is it. The pound cake. This I've saved for, what's it been, 2002? 18 years because it was awesome. I was like part of like the pound cake society. Um, we would share pound cakes. It was awesome. Um, yeah, and it was like something like I really enjoyed. And one time my friend Matt Davis, shout out to Matt, uh, asked me if he could have part of my pound cake. And like I was shocked at his audacity to ask for something that was so meaningful to me. But again, I think like the religion was working on me. And I started to say, okay, you know, I, I, I'll share a little bit. I broke it in half, then I broke it in half again, and gave him like a fourth, you know, like not the most generous. But I could definitely see a progression from the Eric Lenhart who wouldn't have shared to the Eric Lenhart who was. And I, I guess I'm trying to say the Catholic faith works. It, it worked for me. It, it made me more generous. I'm still kind of a jerk, but I'm less of a jerk because of, of my faith. And so this is a kind of a symbol of a time when almost like the Grinch, you know, has like a little heartbeat. It's like, okay, I think the Lord is is prying apart my, my selfishness and my self-centeredness. So that's a, a moment that I, I kind of uh, share also. Um, in doing all these retreats, I really... Uh, started to get interested in uh, my faith. I met Capuchin Franciscans, which, <laughs> spoiler alert, ended up joining. Um, big deal because I, I'd never met a friar. I, I had asked some priests who were very good at, at St. Mary's and St. Anne's, my home parish. Um, but it was weird because I was reading a lot about St. Francis of Assisi. And when I met an actual Franciscan, it was like, there's an old M&M's commercial, maybe you've seen it, where they meet Santa and it's like, he does exist. They do exist. And it was just a moment where I was sure God was talking to me. And so another kind of thing I want to offer to you is if you are looking for the Lord in your life, he'll find you. You'll find him. If you're walking around, you know, kind of being self-centered, doing your own thing, um, you might miss some of these, these God moments as you move forward. So and I think that's what prayer does. It gives us a vision to see the Lord. Okay, so I'm at West Point, um, involved in retreats, met some friars, and I became very inspired by them. And uh, again, I guess I would say at this point, young adults, you know, teenage, uh, 19, 20, starting to grow a little bit in faith. Um, it's all good. You know, there's, there's micro ups and downs in there too, like, you know, bad grades and stuff and disappointments. But overall, things are kind of at a high point. I'm discovering the joy of my faith. It went from being like an intellectual thing. Jesus is God. Um, you know, he is God and man, the creed, all these things which are, are true. Uh, it went from intellectual to something that I was living out in my life. And, and that's the move that I really want to see you make as a young adult. Because I think that's why something like two-thirds of teenagers, 20-somethings, um, leave the church. It's not a secret. You know that. And I think that's why. that They, they don't make that, that move from knowledge to, to living out. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do is, is really start to live it out. You'll see the connections. The world will just like burst with, with little parables all over the place. Um, so around that time, getting involved, I really felt inspired to, at that point, leave the academy and and work as a cap corps at CYFM. So I did that, had an awesome year. The friars, Father Fred was working there at the time with Brother Carlos, and uh, met a lot of the friars, made an awesome impression on me. Um, I ended up going back to school, University of, of Scranton, and finishing undergrad there. But the friars left a really good impression on me. And I, I, I was 21 at the time, so I wasn't like thinking about joining an order. Um, but they definitely made a good impression on me. 
Now, around that time, I was a senior in college. Um, a very painful experience happened to me, and that is my, my father uh, contracted a disease called pancreatitis, which affects your pancreas, and uh, very painful. He got sick in December and died in April. This is 2006. I was a senior in college. And that was a real, you know, um, it was a maroon kind of, that was a real uh, down point. Um, it was just painful. And many of you maybe have, have seen a loved one suffer. And uh, there's only a few people in the world who really love you unconditionally. And to lose one, um, that really hurts. And so, it, you know, it, that was my first kind of experience with a loss like that. Um, and it's, it still hurts. You know, this is what, 14 years later? Um, and so it's still part of my prayer life. And um, yeah, so that was definitely a down moment. I was a senior in college and kind of looking forward to some new things. It happened kind of suddenly. He wasn't in poor health uh, previously. Um, but my faith gave me one great consolation. That is, he died on April 16th, 2006 which that year happened to be Easter. And Mrs. Bender ended up coming to uh, the funeral and uh, saw me and gave me a big hug and said, um, you should know that people who die on Easter go right to heaven. And I have never been able to verify that in all of my five years of theological studies anywhere in any official church document, but it's certainly my hope. Um, and that, that's our hope for all of our, our loved ones who have, who have passed on. And so even though that time was so painful and a low time emotionally, I did feel close to the Lord. I, I felt close to my, my dad even. Um, and that relationship hasn't ended. We're, we're still you know, in touch through what we call the communion of saints. And um, yeah, in a way, I, I was grateful for the Easter his passing on Easter, and also looking back, I mean, he drove me to West Point and back on a weekend. It's like 20 hours of driving. Uh, I had a very good father, and he gave me a good example. And so gratitude is kind of what I feel most with that now. Um, so ended up joining the order. You know, and, and grief is, is a part of your life, but you do, you know, um, it, you're not always in that, that pit. I emotionally recovered. Um, joined the order. This is 10 years ago. And I, I became what's called a postulant, meaning the word means to question. So I was questioning the Lord. The order was questioning me. I was questioning the order. It's a time to ask questions. And my attitude was, if it goes great, great. I'll, I'll carry on. If it goes terribly, that's fine. I have nothing to lose. I'll, I'll try it out. And if I'm not called to be a friar, okay, I'll be a teacher or an accountant or a real estate, whatever. You know, I, I had options, um, and, and so do you. Um, but I really wanted to, to test this out. And that's been the biggest gift in my life is, is my vocation. And, and now as a priest, uh, I see endless, endless blessings. Um, I want to wrap up, but what I most wanted to offer you before you start to do your own timeline, that's kind of why I demonstrated this. To get, so you're going to have a little sheet of paper, and we want you to kind of trace your timeline. And also maybe have some objects like I did that are have some symbolic meaning for your faith and for your life, and kind of see where the Lord's at work in all this. The most important thing of doing this is once we are aware of the Paschal mystery, the death, the suffering, death, resurrection, ascension of the Lord, you see that pattern everywhere. Uh, the Paschal mystery is the only story. Any good work of fiction, literature, history has moments of challenge, suffering, death, and resurrection. And so the goal of our life as disciples of the living God is to see where our ups and downs can map onto the Lord's. Because the Lord is never far from us. And I really want this time to be a time where we can see more and more the Lord is part of our lives. Something to even deepen and deepen. At every moment, we can become closer to Jesus, especially in the Paschal Mystery. Blessings to you. Um, the next thing is, normally at this time you'd be wild with applause. <laughs> um, that concludes the talk. Next, we're going to, uh, you're going to do the timeline activity. 
piece of paper and kind of track and uh, do a better job than me. Like sort of have like maybe some like rough dates and some events uh, to share that. Um, significant events, timeline of your life, experiences of God. Um, and also do it, do it prayerfully. Have some time to, to pray in your life. Include sacraments like baptism and these things. Maybe you don't remember that, but uh, things like that. Significant encounters with God. Set aside 20 to 25 minutes, 15 for some personal prayer. Um, in, you have a document that has all these things that you receive from us. And, and 10 minutes for the reflection questions to, to jot out some ideas. At 7 p.m. tonight, join us for Eucharistic Adoration. There'll be a link there. That'll last 45 minutes. Again, a time to pray to the Lord, to be with the Lord, to, to hear the Lord's voice. The Lord's always calling to us. We just sometimes aren't, aren't listening. And then at 8 o'clock, we'll have um, an evening reflection group, and that, that Zoom link will be uh, listed there. And that'll be about an hour and a chance to kind of share with each other some of these reflection questions. Okay, see you there.